This month on The Card Life, presented by Pristine Auction. There's one thing about this hobby that I believe it brings families together. But at its core, what it was designed to do is to bring people together. As I looked out across the room, I thought, why aren't these cards up? So he's the one baseball player that I actually have a friendship with that was born out of making trading cards. Welcome to The Card Life, I'm your host Matt Strom. This month we're kicking off the new year with something different. Sports cards have existed for well over a century, but there may be more innovation happening right now within the hobby than at any point in its history. This month we'll travel across the country and profile some of the ways collectors, families, and companies are innovating and introducing new ways for people to collect. Let's start on the east coast of Florida with the story of a father and son who started to innovate in the hobby space in the mid-1990s. They now have three generations working on a new approach to the original foundation of the sports card hobby, trading. William Nidefer was a star high school basketball player who was recruited by three dozen schools, including Dean Smith at North Carolina. After playing at Virginia Tech in the 1970s, involvement in the sports card hobby became a central part of his family's life. I can't remember many childhood memories without sports cards. We actually went around town to try and find anybody that sold cards. We would tell my mom and, and my sister, we'd be like, hey, we've got to run an errand real quick. And before you know it, we were at our favorite shop or going to find some lady in her home to buy cards, whatever it took. And a secret, we still use that excuse oh, a lot yeah, yeah, right yeah. now to yep. do it. So yeah, yeah. We we got, it, we'll we be right back. Got to run an errand. <laughs> my best memories of it, though, is what it did for my father and I. He gave me a gift that I never even understood at the time. He gave me a gift of something to pursue, something to be passionate about, something to have fun with, to remember that you can make a hobby more than just a hobby if you choose to. We just started having fun with it. It's what we did. And it's, I believe it's one of the reasons that he and I have been as close as we have our whole lives. But to get to spend time, how honored I was that he wanted to go with me and spend time with me on the weekends. Now, he ended up, I had to buy a lot of cards for him, but I'd much rather spend my money on that and other things if he had gotten trouble and gone the other way. William had always been an entrepreneur and deeply involved in charity work, but a chance encounter with former Dallas Cowboy Larry Brown at a card show led to a conversation about a new basketball team he had formed called the Dallas All-Stars. Composed of Cowboy players, William started booking games for the team. Larry actually moved to office inside our building, right where we were, and so we started living, you know, hey, let me hook you up with uh, Kenny Norton Jr. Or, or Michael Irvin or, you know, all of these incredible guys. They would sign autograph things. So we started getting all these things signed and I had a whole warehouse of autograph things. And I said, what am I gonna do with all this? What William eventually decided to do with it was create special packs of cards called Cowboy Bilia, which included some unheard of innovation in sports cards at the time. Started pursuing it uh, with some of the card companies and we found that Collector's Edge seemed to be the most open to it and started talking about some of the ideas and it was, let's do a product and let's call it Cowboy Bilia. I said, I know that there's been like maybe a redemption but the redemption that they had was because they didn't have the athlete to sign the card yet. Mm. I'm talking about a full out, we want to put on these redemptions, assign full size helmets, jerseys, photos, giveaway game tickets, and they loved it. Got 25 players together and we went to their team meeting room and we signed 96,000 autographs over about a six week period. And so after getting all these things signed, we put them in the packs. So it was based on 1996 Collector's Edge, their Edge cards. So if you remember Collector's Edge cards, they were that nice plastic, but they came out with a special edition. It was a white box and it was 1996 Cowboy Billia Edge. I think it was every two and a half packs, you would get an autograph. That was unheard of. But the thing that we were ahead of our time was, at that point in time, the, the packs were selling for $2, maybe $1, $2. 
And if you had a $5 pack, you were expensive. You were high end. Well, our packs were selling at $15 a pack. Yeah. So we launched that product and you know, it, it did very, very well. They only did a thousand cases. The big autos out of the set, uh, obviously the Emmett Smith autograph, uh, that's one of the big autos out of the set. Uh, everybody would chase. So most of the cards were numbered to, uh, as you can see on the back of them, here's a Russell Maryland, number to 4,000. Introducing autographs and redemption cards and all these things was kind of a groundbreaking move, but we really did this first of its kind thing for this massive project with a single team. Uh, and said, still this day, this is funny, still this day, people still try to redeem some of the redemption cards from back in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Post Cowboy Bilia, Eric and William continued to work card shows for different companies all across the country. They stayed heavily involved in the hobby while continuing their passion of helping others in the nonprofit sector. Then I started getting involved in technology too. And so for me, it was working at a, a nonprofit in Tennessee that we actually helped uh, people who were calling in, youth that were calling in with all sorts of issues. We built a technology project that could connect them to help and services. And from that, I saw the power that technology can bring. And so it wasn't a hard leap about three and a half, four years ago when I came to my dad and I said, you know what would be fun? To take this hobby we love so much and to take the technology that we can build and bring purity back to the hobby. And so we said, how can we bring it back to where I was as a kid? When I used to sit down with my buddies and trade. And let's say that I'm searching for something. So I'm gonna put in here, Adam Wainwright. I'm a diehard Cardinals fan. So I'm gonna put that I'm looking for something. It's gonna show me there's two matching items right now of Adam Wainwright. It'll show me the two items and I can click into them and view them. Once I'm in it, this is actually one of the things that I love the most about our platform. There's a lot of analytics, a lot of tools that you're gonna see on here. But one of the things I love the most is you have the option to offer your item for trade, buy or sell, or if you just wanna show off your collection and you don't want anybody to offer anything to you, you can just showcase your item so that people can see the incredible collections you work with. You can do one-on-one -on -one chats with people, live, real-time chats, then I can launch my live stream on here and immediately do short-term auctions. You can do all that within Secure Trade Club. My dad and I, he traveled a lot when I was a kid. I mean, he was on the road, but we always had collecting. We always had that trip to the shop. But the relationship I have with my father is forever one of the greatest relationships in my life. There's one thing about this hobby that I believe it brings families together. But at its core, what it was designed to do is to bring people together. ChristineAuction.com. It's baseball stuff, it's basketball, it's wrestling, it's Marvel stuff. Tatis, Patrick Mahomes, Wayne Gretzky, LeBron James, autographed Andy Kadidas jersey, Mookie Betts, Muhammad Ali. Personal favorite thing on the site are the 10 minute auctions. You can bid on the item for only 10 minutes. Highest bidder wins. It's free to register, free to bid. Sign up today, pristineauction.com. Pristine Auction is a proud sponsor of The Card Life. Head over to pristineauction.com where over 10,000 sports card auctions end every week. Innovation doesn't always have to mean technology. A former hoop standout that played on Ball State's first NCAA tournament team in 1981 was inspired after looking through a card collection that had sat dormant for a decade. My name is Jeff Parker, 63 years old, from Bloomington, Indiana, and I'm the inventor of the card cradle. In February of 21, my son calls me and says, did you see where that Kobe Bryant card sold for $2 million? And I said, no, not really, having lost touch with the hobby. So he said, well, you might want to go downstairs in the basement and check those cards out. So I go downstairs and start sorting through our cards. We've got thousands upon thousands of cards and boxes and binders and started finding all these really valuable cards. I asked some local collectors about card shows and selling cards, and they said, if you want to go to a good card show, to a big card show, go to Dallas. So we actually bought a table, and my son and I did a road trip, got down there, and it was really an eye-opening experience. 
thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of tables, and it just kind of was overwhelming, really. We sold a lot of cards, but what really caught my eye and was really the genesis for the whole for the card cradle was all these tables all look exactly the same. There's cases with cards in them, you couldn't really see them that well. And as I looked out across the room, I thought, why aren't these cards up? Why isn't there a better way to display cards? And I grabbed some paper and duct tape and I actually made one. And I thought, this is what it needs to look like, something like this. But we made all these different iterations till we came up with a final design that I was really happy with. During that process, I coined the name Card Cradle. Less than about six months time, we went from a paper mock-up to actually having the card cradle in hand. It's that easy. The other version we have is a hook version that actually goes onto a wire display. And so in less than one square foot of show table, you can display more cards than you can in the case. And so I think that the card cradle has a chance to really revolutionize the way cards are shown at shows or local card shops. My whole goal with the Card Cradle was to amplify collectors' experience, to let them interact with their cards more, see them more, get them out of boxes, out of binders, get them up on walls, just so that you can enjoy them more, you know, and just give them a, a new way to express their, their love for collecting. Earlier this year, we told you about Ian Badir's world record collection of Kansas City Royal Cards. But Badir has also used his talents to make his own custom cards, including coordinating with athletes to make their own cards using game-used materials. And at FanFest, they had a whole table full of previous year's batting gloves, and you could buy them. So there was only one pair of gloves that was pink. So I bought that pair just because they were cool. Well, I got home later on and was trying to figure out in Photomatch where did this pink pair of batting gloves come from. I knew it was likely a Mother's Day game. So I went through all the photos from Mother's Day, Going, getting to the end, no player had this specific pattern of gloves that I had, and I couldn't find it. I got to the very last photo, and lo and behold, there were the batting gloves right there. Jorge Soler celebrating the first home run he hit as a Kansas City Royal. And that was the pair of batting gloves that I had. So the following year, the Royals had Fan Fest. Once again, you get a chance to meet the players. And I gave Jorge his own card with his batting glove cut into it for him to keep for his collection, and then he signed this one for me. Wow. So that was, a, that was a lot of fun to bring that card completely to fruition there. Brewer Hicklin, before he'd made his Major League debut many years ago, he had a advertisement on his website that said, hey, you can purchase a pair of my batting gloves, and some of the proceeds will go to a local charity. I thought, this is, this is great. I could get a pair of his batting gloves. I could make a nice, cool, game-used relic that I can make at home on my own time. So I went and purchased that, and then I got an email back from his personal Gmail thanking me for the purchase and supporting his charity. So I was like, all right, well, if this is his email, I'm just gonna email him back and say, hey, thank you so much for letting me purchase your batting gloves. By the way, I make custom trading cards and I noticed you don't really have that many cards made of you and you don't have any that have relics in them. So if you'd like, I'd be happy to make you a card with that batting glove that you sent me. I usually don't expect a response from athletes because normally they're very busy. He emailed me back 10 minutes later and said, absolutely, Ian, talk to me after the season is over. So I couldn't believe that. So this was years ago. I messaged him back. We did a card project together. Half the cards went to him. He sent me the other half back to me autographed, which was awesome. And then we've maintained a friendship over the years as he's worked his way through the Royals minor league system. So he's currently playing in AAA at Omaha, just 45 minutes away from me, and uh, getting the chance to see him, support him as he's in minor leagues, working his way back up to KC. Um, has just been really, really awesome. So he's the one baseball player that I actually have a friendship with that was born out of making trading cards. That's what I love about custom cards and all the folks that are out there that make custom cards. It's just, the limit is just your own imagination and creativity and what you may, you know, what you may have access to. So custom cards are a really fun way to take on a new challenge and add something new to the hobby that may not necessarily be filled today. Up next, one way CSG uses technology to check the authenticity of cards.
CSG is proud to be the official grading partner of The Card Life. CSG's world-class expertise and state-of-the-art technology provide collectors with accurate, consistent, affordable, and fast grading. Learn more at csgcards.com. Our friends from CSG sent over one way they use an old technology, ultraviolet light, to detect changes made to cards. Hi, I'm Andy Broom, Vice President of CSG. And in today's grade school, we're gonna talk about what is a UV light? UV light, or ultraviolet light, is a tool that graders have at their disposal, but it's not a tool we use every day. There's different types of UV light. There's short wave and long wave. Uh, most of the black light bulbs that you've seen, uh, or UV flashlights, are long wave, so they're not as dangerous to look at. Short wave UV is dangerous to look at with the naked eye. Now, as I mentioned, UV light is not something a grader uses on a, on a daily basis. Uh, what we do use it for is to detect some types of alterations, such as uh, color added. Uh, sometimes power racing can show up under UV light. Uh, and also some autograph al alterations will show up under UV light. The one thing that UV does not work well on are dark colors. So if you have a card that has a black border, dark blue border, uh, and it's been recolored, the UV is not going to help uh, to show that alteration, as we see here in this card. Uh, dark border, and it has been recolored on the corner, but it does not show under the black light. And this card too is the same. As we can see here, uh, white stock card, white borders, but there's a couple of areas of damage that have actually been colored in, uh, as we can see under the UV light. Now the handheld UV light is something that all of our graders have at their disposal, uh, but we do have some more advanced technology that we can use that uses not only uh, different wavelengths of UV light, but other types of light as well. Here we have a 1954 Topps Hank Aaron rookie card. Now this card's been trimmed and power raised, and then the borders have been painted back in to hide the alterations. But under our UV light, we can clearly see the alteration. And just like a loop, a good UV light is something every collector should have. Now as far as the type to buy, it doesn't really matter the, the type of UV light. This is a UV flashlight that has a beam that you can focus, but that's more personal preference. Get your cards graded at csgcards.com and follow us on social media at CSG Cards. Up next, a couple of tech innovations making waves across the hobby. Oh my goodness, that is a Tom Brady autograph. Oh, oh my, one of one diamond Lamella Ball rookie. That's a hit. Wow, that's a big card, guys. Oh, quarterback Joe Burrow. Yes, please, out of the first box. Oh, oh sick. Mike Trout's on-card autograph, 9.5, autograph grade 10. Mike, check out this new app I found. What is it, Jesse? It's Card Shop Live. It's got live video shopping for the latest sports cards and collectibles. And it even has live auctions. I just won a Michael Jordan rookie card. How does it feel to be a winner? It feels amazing. Wake up, sweetheart. We got work to do. Honest sellers, authentic collectibles, trusted community. Card Shop Live. Download the app today. Upper Deck's EPAC program launched in January of 2016 with just one product line, Series 1 Hockey. It has constantly evolved in the six years since and provides collectors hesitant about making the switch to digital assets an incentive. Some of the cards are actually physical cards that can be shipped to you. We've added a ton of new features, over a hundred or so products over the last six years, different licenses. You know, we've gone from the NHL to Marvel. AEW is a big one for us now, all elite wrestling. So it's just continues to expand. The number of collectors on the sites continues to expand the number of products, the number of things and ways you can engage with your collection and your cards on there. You can open a free pack of digital cards and start your collection off that way. And then, you know, from there, the opportunities are kind of endless. You can go in, start purchasing products of, you know, from Upper Deck, some of your favorite products like 21, 22 UD Series 1, a ton of different Marvel products that are available at the site at different times. So you can purchase that pack, open it online to see exactly what you got in that pack. All of those cards are added to your digital account. And from there, you can take those cards, you can trade them with other collectors around the world. All the trading's done instantaneously. So 
Well, I trade a card to you. That card goes from my collection into your collection and I get a card from your cards from you and it's all you know handled instantly. I can use my cards in my collection to earn exclusive achievement cards on there. So for collecting sets, you can complete those and get cards that you can't find anywhere else. The only way to actually get those cards is to complete achievements and collect sets on, on EPAC and then have those cards added to your account. At the end of the day, a lot of these cards are physical, so you can actually have that physical card shipped to you, put it in the top loader, send it home, and then in a couple of weeks, usually that card's sitting in a box at your door and you can add it to your physical collection as well. Sometimes it's difficult to find a shop that's near you, or more recently, the retail locations just haven't carried as much product as they have just because it's flying off the shelves, right? But I can always log into EPAC. I can purchase that pack and I get that instant gratification of seeing exactly what I got. And, you know, beyond just that, I get to interact with collectors around the world. When most people hear NFT, they think digital art, board apes, or NBA Top Shot. But Ben Smith from Midwest Box Breaks in Fort Wayne, Indiana, has brought the NFT concept into the hobby. While some collectors might be turned off by the word NFT, Smith says his Break Club NFT is actually just a membership token to a card community that comes with loads of benefits. I was approached by a couple guys in the hobby who also um, had some knowledge with NFTs and they said, do you realize your community, uh, which we call Break Club, do you realize your community is a perfect fit for an NFT project? And so we hired a team and in January, we launched our own NFT project built around um, literally Break Club. And we created this, uh, it's a family. The main function for a, a productive NFT is the utility. So what we created was a, an access token, which would unlock various perks and benefits and membership it's become a great place for people to come in and to learn and, and lean on each other and have fun and enjoy collecting together. We've got an aggressive roadmap and, and we've knocked out a lot of those things that we wanted to do on our list. And, and I think once people come in, they're like, this is just a card group. This is a lifetime pass. Here's a $20,000 case of Topps Transcendent that is on our roadmap to give away when we fully mint out. I've brought on 60 trusted sellers from the hobby community we sold $350,000 worth of sports cards in singles outside of eBay. And I'm uh, super proud of that. That's what I wanted to create. And it's gotten to the point where we've actually brought on four or five breakers to break in our group. The goal is to create seven days a week of hobby content. And I'm really trying to create something that will grow and live and breathe past me, our core group, and move on and on. We're all physical, real card collectors. And it's tough to get past people that, oh, I, I'm not in NFTs. It, it's, a, it's a key. It's a key that unlocks the perks and the benefits and, and the resources. And that's been the challenge. It's been a fun challenge. Oh my goodness. That is a Tom Brady autograph. Oh, oh my, one of one diamond Lamella Ball rookie. That's a hit. Wow, that's a big card, guys. Oh, quarterback, Joey Burrow. Yes, please, out of the first box. Oh, oh sick. Mike Trout's on-card autograph, 9.5, autograph grade 10. We hope you enjoyed this special episode of The Card Life. Next month, we'll be back to our normal format and tell you some great stories about the hobby. I'm Matt Strom. We'll see you next time on The Card Life.